Level 64 presents A Playing Mind and Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Hey there, once again, welcome to another Lemon 64 play guide and review. In this week's show, we'll be taking a look at the Space Simulator Apollo 18 Mission to the Moon, produced by Artec Digital Productions and published by Accolade in 1987. We begin on the launch pad, and it's our job to successfully launch from the planet Earth and to get ourselves into space. And that is easier said than done, because this game is quite difficult. At the start of the mission, we'll have to manually turn on each of the systems in our spaceship. That means turning on the main computer, known as the flight control system, and turning on all the sequences in order until all of the lights go green. Sometimes we'll have to manually switch through different systems until we find the right system that we need. until finally we get the go at the bottom of the screen and then you can either press the fire button or F1 and hopefully we will return back to the launch pad to try for a successful launch. And despite a little flickering you can see in the control room we can now press that fire button to attempt the launch. various stages throughout the launch we will be required to press the fire button on time and if we are a moment too soon or a moment too late those meters will be recorded and those parameters will be delivered to us at the end if we don't manage to hit the orbit of this planet and we'll have to get within 10% of 100% to successfully get us into orbit and all these small degrees off course will unfortunately affect us and it will mean that we are off course on this particular attempt. The mission will then abort and it's up to us to repeatedly press that fire button to get us out of the action in orbit and successfully disgracefully land back onto that planet Earth. Unfortunately we were 180 degrees off course and that means we were going completely in the wrong direction and those kinds of errors won't really give you many prizes when you're trying to take off towards the moon because the moon really does need a degree of accuracy to fire the rocket in the desired direction and if you don't hit that bang on the nose then you'll fly straight past the moon and end up flying around Jupiter or in my case crashing into the sun. The 
total angle of error is usually calculated using four parameters combined and you can see I was 60 percent or degrees off on that particular run because I over calculated that very last try out of the four and yes it's great that you can actually accommodate that and go for minuses when you've really overburned and you really need to recalculate and it's really great that you can get that really onto the degrees if you are actually practicing this hard enough but it really does take some kind of a master to get that really on target. You can see only minus four, not point four, shall I say, degrees off the target with that particular stage, but you will have to go through maybe three or four stages of this, and you can see one completely out of error, blows up our spaceship, and we have to try that all over again. <laughs> Navigating this particular control system with space and enter isn't particularly very well done and I would have enjoyed something on the joystick, but having switched everything on again, let's try again with this mission. matters a little more difficult whilst we are flying and up in the air another central column will appear in yellow and those are our vector boosters to the sides and we'll have to roll and perform a roll of our actual spaceship and we'll have to make sure that the two yellows actually try to meet and there isn't a huge deficit in the yellows and obviously if there is then that's another mission abort and you'll have to press the joystick left and right in order to match the yellows up by applying a roll left or a right to get that all matched up as well as pressing the fire button of course to make sure that we keep the right trajectory and so we'll have to make sure that the roll and the trajectory is all in our hands and with that hand full it isn't usually possible to get into orbit on the very first try. This game was coded by Philip Armstrong, who went on to Rackham on the Commodore 64, and Lise Mendoza, who also worked on the train Escape from Normandy, which came out again in 1987. The graphics were created by Grant Campbell, who also worked on Dam Busters in 1985, and Ace of Aces, which appeared in 1986, and the graphic adventure by Accolade Killed Until Dead. And the music was created by Paul Butler, who worked on Desert Fox. And so as we completely mess up, we'll just switch over to the long play found on YouTube and that was created by Flexman and we'll just use that to basically show you the rest of this game. Apparently when you first start this it will give you a movie mode, we can sit through and play through the whole thing, but unfortunately I couldn't get that to work for this recording. So I'm just going to show you at the end of all that, you're supposed to dock and rendezvous with the space module you just supposed to line that up on the screen on your cockpit and having lined that up it will give you a distance and you just have to pilot that thing and try to get that slow enough and in the right place and that's very easy to do. Most people can align the X and the Y perfectly and that's absolutely no problem. And then once you've docked with the spacecraft itself we can now make our journey towards the moon, having done a number of course corrections on the way, and it tells you the program to enter in that case, but you really do need the manual for this type of game. And after a few course corrections, we can now land the lunar module on the surface, which is simply a few bursts of the up and down using the thrusters, and then the easiest one of them all out of all these mini games is the actual walking on the moon part itself, which is a case of leaning forward by pulling right on the joystick and pressing that fire button.
after this, all we need to do is to return back to the lunar module and blast off. And after a few blasts of the fire button and a few course corrections, we can then return to Earth. And then all we have to do is to align the crosshairs on the spacecraft in order to land successfully on planet Earth. and picking up a space satellite along the way. So whilst you see the last part of the game, let me just go through the scores. Ace Magazine gave this game the lowest score with 54%. The Games Machine gave this 73%. Commodore User gave this game 80%. Zap gave Apollo 18 81%. And that is shared by the current Lemon64 score, which is also on 81%, which gives this game an average score of 7 out of 10. This is a tremendously atmospheric game, and if only the first mission wasn't so difficult, it would be a joy to play on the Commodore 64. Is apparently Apollo 18 never went anywhere near the moon or it went there in secret depending on who you believe. So thank you once again for watching another Play Guide review. See you soon.